Welcome to Canadian Defence Focus from CDR Radio, produced by Canadian Defence Review Magazine. This series of podcasts features interviews with leaders and experts in the defence industry, as well as reports and profiles on the very latest in defence technology. Hello and welcome to another edition of the CDR Radio podcast. I'm James Carolins, Ottawa Bureau Chief with Canadian Defence Review, Canada's leading defence magazine. This time on the CDR Radio podcast, we're speaking with Lorenzo Marandola, President of M1 Composites. Based in Laval, Quebec, M1 specialises in aircraft structural repairs, advanced manufacturing of aircraft parts, and non-destructive testing. Hi, Lorenzo. Thanks for joining us today on the CDR Radio podcast. Thanks, James. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you for all the help over the years. So first off, tell us about M1 Composites and your work with the Canadian Armed Forces. So M1 Composites is located in Laval, Quebec, uh, in the uh, Montreal Aerospace uh, Cluster. We do engineering, manufacturing, and repair for both the commercial and defense industry. Uh, We've created a bit of a niche market in terms of Uh, being able to do the things that other companies are not capable of doing or uh, in uh, in the location that we are here in Canada in the northeast so that's uh, that's something that's uh, that's interesting for us we've done work on um, military uh, platforms such as the Boeing Chinook we've done radome engineering and fabrication we've worked on fuel bladder development in collaboration with certain government institutions the Canadian Air Force and the U.S. Air Force. We're also uh, looking to be able to work on the uh, the MRTT, the STTC, and the contribute on the P-8 program. And uh, one of our big goals is to become a uh, an approved Lockheed Martin uh, supplier. We continue to look at every day as a challenge and see how uh, we can keep uh, pushing forward. It sounds like you've been quite busy. So what has M1 Composites accomplished this year? We won the A220 contract uh, for Airbus, so we are one of three companies in the world that are capable of uh, performing the the type of structural repair work uh, for the OEM. So that for us was a major win. Uh, we'd been working on that one for approximately six years. You can I can tell you that you know it takes a long time to be able to get the stars aligned to be able to make things move. We also uh, won a WIS contract, so we're working with them. We won a, a Pratt & Whitney contract on the uh, hybrid electric plane. And we're looking forward to uh, many, many new opportunities and materializing them. Now, you're now on the AIAC Board of Directors. How is that going for you? We're blessed here in Canada to have Mike and, uh, and his team, uh, Ushar and Matt and all these guys are, are, are doing a great job at putting industry first in Canada, which is, uh, I think it's, it's what we really needed, and uh, myself, it's an honor to be uh, among such a great group of, you know, uh, the board members. We're blessed with having such fine leaders, and they all uh, bring so much to the table, and I think they can bring so much more to Canada. You just need to give them the opportunity to do so, and I think that the AIC is the uh, the perfect place for that to happen. I, I look at, for M1, uh, AIAC has represented a major step forward, and um, I think for the country as well, I think the government needs to see this association as being an open door for us to become uh, leaders on the aerospace side on a, on a world level. Now, you also attended the Farnborough International Air Show this year. And how did that go for you and M1? So Farnborough was the first time at Farnborough. We'd done uh, Le Bourget in the past in France. Uh, Farnborough was, uh, it, it was an experience. The amount of companies that were there was overwhelming, really, if you look at it. But what I noticed with Farnborough is very military-oriented. Uh, you have a lot of uh, the companies worldwide. It's uh, it's really at another level. Um, it was great also to be able to meet the Minister of Transport, Minister uh, Rodriguez, also uh, Minister Champagne and, and whatnot. So that was it was extremely good. And uh, Christopher Skeet, things went really, really well there. And uh, there's uh, there's more to come. I think more Canadian companies need to be present at these uh, these events. Now, the much-awaited national aerospace strategy was announced by Minister Champagne at the Farnborough International Air Show. What are your thoughts on the strategy? Well, I'm, I'm really I'm grateful that he uh, endorses that and that he announced it. I think it's it's a great thing. In terms of uh, my views on that, 
you need a roadmap. You need a way to be able to see how we're going to get there. It's fine to have a goal, but if you've got no plan on how to get there, you're not going to make it. Or if you do make it, you're not going to make it on time. You know, the last time we had a plan was back in 2005. That was 19 years ago, and that's uh, way too long. The other element is, if you look at the world situation right now, you've got many different conflicts happening simultaneously. You've got uh, different players, China, Russia, moving in different directions, and th that may well affect the well-being of Canadians and may well affect the, the well-being of, of North America as a whole. So for us, it's extremely interesting to have a plan as to how we're going to get there and how uh, sovereignty in Canada in terms of being able to do our own R&D, our own uh, manufacturing, our own sustainment side is is something that's it, it's a must. I mean, I think Minister Champagne announced it at, in Farnborough, which is a great thing. But I think the important portion there is the fact that now we need to move forward on it. And, you know, you asked about the AIAC before. Well, this is, these are the kinds of things that AIAC does, and we need to be able to materialize that. Now, let's jump on to another thorny issue. In your view, what needs to be changed about Canada's defense procurement process? As a small business, uh, if I look at the procurement side, we can't go directly to the uh, Department of National Defense. We can't go directly to Canada. We need to go to primes. So that makes it for a small business that, that really limits us in terms of being able to increase our capabilities in terms of being able to increase the number of jobs, in terms of being able to increase innovation. So we can't go directly to the government. We've got to go to a prime. A prime is another company, and that other company will then decide as to what they're going to give you. If I look at the United States, they've got a small business office, which basically allows you to go straight to the U.S. Air Force, straight to the Navy, the Marines, and uh, the Coast Guard, which allows for a, an SME to be able to get work and to be able to execute it. And in doing such, such an exercise, what you're doing is you're building capability. You're building something that in Canada before we did not have. And, you know, if, if I look at what M1's done, you know, we've learned through the contracts that we've gotten through uh, the, the, the bigger companies like, you know, the, the Air Canada's and whatnot. If they would not have had that vision of developing a company like M1 locally here, we would not have that in, in, in country and we would have continued to go to the U.S. and, the, and to Germany and to France for that matter. The, the other elements are is that even for the larger companies, we need we come back to that, you know, that aerospace strategy. You need to have a plan and, and that procurement process needs to be able to blend in perfectly with that plan. And within that plan is clearly highlight what capabilities you want in Canada and how you're going to achieve them. And that procurement process needs to be one that is efficient. If you know what you're going to buy from day one, there's no point in going out and doing a procurement process that'll cost companies millions of dollars and all kinds of time to be able to put together proposals and then have to review these proposals. We've got to be more intelligent. We've got to be smarter. We've got to be more agile and being able to achieve results that we weren't able to in the past. And sometimes as Canadians, we all try to be, um, I'm going to say, more Catholic than the Pope. But we need to really find a way to be more efficient because Canada's got a lot of catching up to do. And, you know, our spending in the past 70 years since World War II has been, hasn't been that much. And, you know, we've relied on the United States. And don't get me wrong, I think the relation with the United States is amazing. We're gifted to have such a great partner just uh, at our border. But Canada's got to be able to hold its own and, and pull its own weight. And being able to do that means for us, means for Canada, means for every Canadian to be able to say what is it that we need and how are we going to develop that capability here and have a sovereign, sustainable solution. Well, this begs a logical question. What is your strategy for growing M1 composites when it comes to defense? That is a difficult question, right? It was, it's, it's always easy to highlight what the issues are. <laughs> we need to be able to find the solution. So what, when I look at the future for us, it means not just looking, you know, in the past people would say, oh, I'm going to get into repair and we're going to make tons of money. First things first, if you do it for the money, I think you need to, you need to find something else. You can make a lot more money in other industries. Um, although you can make a really good living in the aerospace industry, I think that for M1, it's important for us to look forward, not look back. I mean, yes, the repair side is great. Yes, manufacturing is great. But just like AI, just like the new challenges that we're getting with cybersecurity, with, uh, you know, 40,000 threats um, 
of uh, cybersecurity threats predating that the Canadian military gets. The times are changing, and in order for us to be able to come up with a strategy, is you need to look forward and you need to almost predict where your target is going to be in five years from now. And that isn't always an easy thing. But in looking at it, it starts with the schools, starts with M1 working with schools and looking at how to prepare the schools to be able to prepare resources here in Canada. I mean, we've got to go outside to get resources because we need to be able to get the resources that have a, a certain capability. The world is no longer a big place. It's a very small place and you can go get people. So it brings me to resources. We're looking at diversification of resources in terms of what their capabilities are and bringing a lot of that new capability back into Canada, looking at equipment, cutting edge equipment as to what will it take? What will the future fighter look like? What will the Canadian military look like? And what will Canada and its allies need? And based on that, what type of equipment do we see that we're going to have to be able to procure or develop because we've developed equipment in the past to be able to sustain, be it commercial or military operations. The other element is I'm hoping that Canada is going to relook at their, their R&D policies and their, their, uh, the shred credits and all that because we can't discourage that. We need to encourage even more of that. If anything, now is the time to be able to put more funding into R&D, more funding into innovation and being able to come up with solutions that other countries can use. And on that fact, I think I want to be able to highlight one very important point, which is uh, the element of exporting to other countries. So we need, as a country, we need to be able to have the Canadian leaders uh, support Canadian industry. So yes, support M1, but also support the other SMEs, also support the other primes that are in here. Because during the Second World War, Canada was a powerhouse in terms of being able to develop pilots, being able to develop training. And we still have a lot of that. We just need to be able to value it and put it out there. All the other countries are doing it. We need to do the same thing. And we need to regain respect on a world level as to what Canada really represents, because we've got a lot of technology here. We've got a lot of smart people. We just need to be able to promote them more. So one last question, Lorenzo. How are you investing in the future of M1 Composites? If we look at it in terms of, um, as I mentioned in the last question, in terms of equipment, we're looking at new equipment. We're looking at, you know, the, um, the way of, um, of uh, the future in terms of what education, what type of, you know, uh, support we can get from schools. And also we're looking at is getting into, you know, more in terms of the global market getting M1 known even more. We've done a big push this year up to now. We've been pretty covert um, and we've done a lot uh, in-house without, you know, anyone ever knowing about it. And a lot of people that have visited M1 have said, my God, where, where has this place been? The fact of the matter is, is, you know, we've, we've kept it that way purposely to be able to develop, to be able to get good at what you know how to do. Now, I think, you know, when we're looking at the investments, there's going to be a lot of investments in getting M1 known. Also in resources and training, as I mentioned before, in cybersecurity, that's, that's a big one. AI is something that we're looking at as well. And again, uh, if there's one thing that I, that I would recommend to any company is listen to your customers more and see what they, what they require and how you can help solve their problems. Okay. Well, Lorenzo, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you. Greatly appreciate it. You've been listening to the latest in the CDR Radio podcast series. They are produced by Canadian Defence Review, Canada's leading defence magazine. I've been speaking with Lorenzo Marandola, president of M1 Composites. To hear more CDR Radio podcasts, go to CanadianDefenseReview.com or find us on iTunes and Google Play under CDR Radio. I'm James Careless. Talk to you again next time. Tune in next time for another Canadian Defence Focus podcast from CDR Radio.